Well, I'm excited about this brand new series we're starting called Outcasts, you know. In the Bible, we read about Jesus many times of hanging out with kind of the, the outcasts of society, the people that other people would not even, you were thought that were unreachable or were people that you, you had to stay away from. And Jesus modeled a life of love for us to follow. And so we're going to be talking about over these next few weeks about, about people that Jesus befriended and people's stories and lives that Jesus affected as he reached out to them. But today we're going to set up the rest of the few weeks in, uh, in this message and we're going to talk about God's heart for the lost. You see, God's heartbeat, the heartbeat of God is... For those to come into relationship with him. He didn't come here to, to start a religion. He didn't start, come, come, Jesus didn't come to earth to start a, 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 um, a, 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 an organization. But he came here that the people can receive and, and enter into a relationship with him. When Jesus walked on the earth, he, there were many religious people. People that, that, that followed rules and regulations and, and, and did the right thing. They followed all the rules. They said all the right things. They, they looked great on the outside. But, but Jesus would say, you, you know, everything looks good on the outside. But, but what's really going on in here? They, they, you know, they, 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 they kept themselves looking good, and they, but they looked down on other people. They got, didn't live up to their expectations. But the thing about Jesus is he reached out to those people. He reached out to those who were hurting, who were down, those who society might have even rejected. Jesus reached out to a lady one time who committed adultery, and she was being brought to, brought to, to be stoned and put to death because of the sin that she committed. All these religious people gathered around her. And Jesus said, why doesn't the person who has no sin first cast the stone? And this lady's sins were forgiven. Her life was changed. Time after time after time, we read about how Jesus reached out to those who may have been outcasts, but their lives were changed because of his love, because he reached out to those who were hurting in need. You see, the people of the day, the religious leaders of the day, the, the Pharisees, they, they, they missed the heart of God. They thought religion, they thought, they thought that, the, the, that God was all about keeping these rules and these commands. And, and it's important for us to follow God's commands and, and, and honor Him. But they, they missed the heart of God. They missed heaven by 18 inches. They knew up here, but they didn't know down here. They knew about God, but they didn't know God personally. See, it's God's desire for us to have a relationship with him. It's God's desire for the people we surround ourselves with every day to enter into a relationship with him, to, to, to step from merely knowing about God to knowing him, to where he becomes the God of their life, the Lord of their life, and, and they trust him and they live for him. And their sins are forgiven. The, these, these Pharisees, they, they embraced a, 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 a religious system, but, but totally missed out in a genuine relationship with God. Jesus came to earth. It was God in the flesh. And many didn't even recognize who he really was. In fact, many people at the time, because of the people that he hung out with and the, and, and the amazing teachings that he taught, considered him a heretic because they went, they, it went against the grain of what they thought it should look like. It didn't look or sound like they thought it would, would sound, but Jesus was projecting and Jesus was teaching the heart of God. He was often criticized for eating with sinners. He's often criticized for eating with, with people who that, 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 that society may have just, just cast out and said, no, they stay over there, they stay over, and we stay over here. Jesus reached out to people who, 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 who are tax collectors, people that the, that, that, that the people at the time hated and despised. He reached out to lepers, people who were sent to their own colony and their own, their own place to live. He reached out to them and, and showed the love of God to them. You see, there's people that we surround ourselves with every single day, that we are around every single day, that we have the opportunity to show them God's love. Some people we come across, maybe they feel like, maybe they feel, they aren't, but maybe they feel like they're outcasts. Maybe they feel like they are, they, 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 there's a separation from God, and, and, but it's our job as believers to help them experience this new life in Christ. See, when Jesus came, he, he came so that we could all experience what John 10.10 10 says, that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. See, the, the mission 
of Jesus' ministry here on earth was for, to, to make a way for those far from God to come near to him. And today I'm gonna, we're going to be talking about God, what Jesus' mission to save and to seek the lost. And the we'll title of this message of the series is called A Relentless Pursuit. You know, uh, just a couple of months ago, we were uh, visiting Danielle's parents up in the northern part of Connecticut, and, and uh, what we often do when we go there, the, the girls are like these, I don't know if you want to say connoisseurs of playgrounds, you know, like, hey, daddy, look, there's a playground there, we should go play, play there, and we're, we're, we're stopping at new playgrounds, and, we're, and it's for them to have fun, but when we go to their, their grandparents' house, we often go to a playground down the road at the library, and they have a great time, it's huge, it's really huge, it has a lot of cool stuff for little kids, and, and one day we were just going there, it was a nice day out, and there's a lot of other families families around um, playing during the time, at that time, and, the, and there's their swings, there's a huge, huge playscape, and it was great. The, the girls are having a great, great time. There, there's two sections of it. There's a, there's a section for, for little kids over here, then there's a, a section for a little bit bigger kids on the, the other side, and, the, and it was great, and they're running back and forth, playing with, with both areas, going down the slide. I was pushing Bella on the swings, and, and she was having a good old time, and it, it was a whole lot of fun. So Gabby's running on the on the on the on the playscape and Bella, I'm pushing her. Danielle comes over to me and says, Hey, where's Gabby? I don't know. I thought you saw her. <laughs> and I'm looking around, pushing Bella, and I'm like, I don't know, where is she? You know, we, she was just here just a minute ago and now she's not. Just she's kind of disappeared on us and there, there's people all around and the, the road's just kind of right here where there's a parking lot and we're we're wondering where she is, where where could have she gone? You know, so I I'm I'm pushing Bella, just kind of looking around and still Gabby's not there. But I, but but Daniel said, Jeff, it, just, uh, where, where's where's Gabby? I can't find her. There there's only so many places that she could be and and, and all of a sudden it got a little bit serious. <laughs> parents you ever been there <laughs> so i'm like all right bella um you know, let's get off get off the get off the swing we're gonna go look for bell for, for gabby so we're we're walking around and we're taking our our time i mean at the at that time it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal she's got to be somewhere maybe she's hiding in the slide or in the in the playscape or she's hiding somewhere else but 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 we began to look everywhere calling for gabby gabby where are you come out and uh and then when, when she wasn't answering and this went on for a few minutes, and, and those few minutes, they, they, it just seems like the, the seriousness of the situation got, got stronger and stronger, and, and we began to panic and panic a, a little bit more as the moments went by. And, and, and Gabby, where are you? Gabby, we're running around, and the parents were watching us. The, the parents were, other parents were watching us look for our little girl, and, and, and we're, we're looking, we're looking, and, and it seemed like nobody was helping us, and they were content with, with, with they saw the panic that it escalated too. We're like, man, somebody could have could have could have maybe put her in the car and driven away with her we don't know we, we don't see her anywhere and we're seriously thinking like that but we're panicking where's gabby we asked people if they saw where she was and nobody answered nobody saw her you ever lose a child at least you thought you did So all of a sudden, things got serious, and uh, well, we've got Bella. She's here. Okay, you just sit here, and you stay put, and we're going to look for Gabby. So we looked. I knew that she was safe, so I kept her there. But we're looking and looking and looking, and soon Bella came next to me, and she started to, to, to be, become part of the mission. She became part of the, the search for Gabby, and, and she's looking, she's calling, and we're looking for Gabby, and, 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 and people, people were, were kind of looking at a tree in the, in the distance. And we're yelling, and we're screaming, and we're looking for Gabby, and we're wondering, man, what should we call the police? What happened here? These people over here had seen where Gabby had went. But they saw us in a panic, and they, they didn't tell us where they saw her go. So one guy, another father, joined us in the mission. He's looking, and he's, he's really taking responsibility for this lost little girl. And, he's, and, he's, and, he's, and, he, and he knows the seriousness of the situation. He's calling for her, and, he, and, and, and he's helping, and he's doing all that he can. It was, it was very evident at the time that we needed help to find this lost child. We're calling and calling, and the parents are looking at us, but looking over there at the tree, didn't want to get involved. 
I heard some whimpering. It didn't sound like Gabby. I thought it was coming from a baby that was in a car parked in the parking lot. And I saw the tree, and I, I ran over to the tree, and the, the other parents saw me. Go over to the tree, and I'm like, she's not there. I'm just going to, you know, just kind of just want to eliminate all the possibilities. I look around the tree, and there's Gabby leaning up against the tree, crying. I found her. It was such a relief. It was bringing us so much joy. And, and at the same time, I'm like, why didn't these other parents just say something and do something to, to help us find this little girl? They're con- perfectly content minding their own business. They're perfectly content just, just doing their own thing but neglected the seriousness of the situation, that there's someone who's lost or somebody that they, they, these people, they need our help. We need to, we need to, to come on mission with them to, to see this lost girl found. Luke 15, if you want to turn your Bible, we're going to read from Luke chapter 15, chapter 4 through 10. You know, the heartbeat of God is the salvation of souls. The, the heartbeat of God is that the lost are found. We believe that. We believe our, our mission statement here at Church 28 is so that those far from God experience Him, becoming fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ who make their mission the Great Commission. And we're going to read here from Luke chapter 15, 4 through 10. It's a parable of Jesus. Jesus often spoke in parables to teach us lessons, to help us to have spiritual insight. Verse 4. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will we do? What will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that was lost until he found it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home in his shoulder. I remember I, I, took, I took Gabby over from that tree and I, I held her. And it was like, man, it was the best feeling in the world. We were actually thinking, man, somebody might have taken her. And it was such a relief that I was able to hold her in my arms. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me, for I, I found my lost sheep in the same way. There's more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. And Bella was there and she was safe. And I thank God for that. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and her neighbors and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there will be joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. Jesus often spoke in in parables and short stories that, that taught a lesson and often made a point. In this passage of scripture, we read about two stories Jesus used to to show the immeasurable and and priceless value of every individual, of each soul, of every person. They're worth enough so that we can that will leave behind the those who, who are saved and go after the one who is lost. They're so valuable that that one person counts, that he will leave the 99 and go after the one that needs him. It shows Jesus' willingness to pursue relentlessly those who he loves, those who are lost and far from him. God's desire is for us to have a relationship with him, to be close to him, for him to love, to love him and for us to love him, for him to, for us to love him and for him to love us. And God's love is never lacking on his part. Did you know that? Never lacking. There might be some lack on our part. But he's relentless with love.
All right, we're good. We're all good. <laughs> we're all good. Let me just take this off. I believe sometimes there are some challenges when I know that God wants to do something in our lives. Amen? I believe that God wants to speak to our hearts, change our lives, and, uh, and we're just going to believe God that they continue to push forward in what he wants us to do today. But, you know, there's, there's never any lacking on God's part as far as love goes, but it's, it's often a, a, a lack on our part. And he, his desire is for us to, to love him and for him to love us. And he's relentlessly pursuing all of us, every individual relentlessly pursuing us to have a relationship with him and those who are maybe even be the outcasts or those who are who feel like they've been pushed aside he relentlessly pursues them when you are lost and without hope when you feel, when you are far from him you can you, during that time as you look back you can see how god was pursuing you to have a relationship with him and he wants us to accept his love and to live for him. The, 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 and, and, to, and, or, 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 and we have this choice, though, to push it aside. And here's something I want you to remember today is this. That closeness identifies what is found and distance what is lost. Closeness identifies what is found and distance what is lost. See, sin brings a separation into our relationship with God. Sin is what separates us from that, that true, pure relationship with Him. And every person needs that, 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 that gap, that, 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 that gap that, to, to be closed up. It separates us, but it's our choice. And that's what separates us from a relationship with God. And it's that separation that tore God's heart, that separation that, 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 that just uh, that, that tore God's heart. Because it's not his desire for any person to be lost. He's, he, it's his desire to, to reach out to every individual. He says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he sent Jesus, he sent his son Jesus to set him out onto a pursuit. God, God himself took on flesh through Jesus to pursue us. And Luke 19.10 says this. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Can I get a little bit less in the monitors with this mic, please? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Every moment he breathed, Jesus was about the Father's business. Every moment that he believed, that he breathed, he was about what God wanted him to do. Every day he was seeking the lost. He was reaching out to the outcasts, the, the people that maybe other people neglected or, or thought that they weren't good enough. Though, those who seem like, man, they've sinned too much. There's no hope for them. I'm just going to let them be and I'm going to let them stay over there and let's just hope they come to Christ. But Jesus actively pursued people. He went after the, the, those who were, who, were, who were shot down, those who were, who, those who were lost, those who were down and out. And, and he reached out to them, always seeking and saving that which is lost. And without him, we're lost. And everywhere that Jesus went, lives are being changed, lives are being transformed. And when Jesus' ministry began, he, 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 he came to earth with a mission. A mission. It was the greatest rescue mission, search and rescue mission that, that, that has ever happened on the face of the earth. And one of the first things he did is he, he, he found some people to, 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 to gather around him, to, to, to form a team who can, who, can, who can search and rescue, to seek and to save. He wanted to find some people to partner with him in this mission. In Matthew 4, 4, 4 17 through 20, it says, from, from then on, Jesus began to preach. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, and they fished for, they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish for people. 
And they left their nets at once and followed him. See, I, I, I love fishing. I love it tremendously. I, I spent my, my childhood, one of my favorite things to do was, uh, was, was to go fishing with my father. I mean, we, 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 we'd often go and we'd, we'd fish the, 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 the lakes of northern Maine, some of the, the most untouched places that I've ever been. We travel on a logging trail 17 miles into the woods away from civilization. And it's just like, it's perfectly quiet and it's peaceful. And we're going fishing in these untouched waters and it's great, except for our boat buzzing through, you know. But, <laughs> but it was great. It was one of the best times of my life and I, I enjoyed it. It's one, one of my favorite pastimes. And I come here and, I, I, and we move down to New London and I see all these boats and I see people who, 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 who fish and, it, and it's great. And I, I don't know too much about saltwater fishing. A lot of my experience was in the freshwater scene, but, but it was, it, it, I've, been, I've talked to a lot of people with different experiences here. They, they tell me their fishing stories and they've always got these, these you know, this big type of stories, but, but, um, it, but it's great to hear about what, you know, the, what, what people are experiencing in this area. And we see these boats and... They tell us of their experiences, some of them their experiences at sea. I heard a story about a man who went fishing for a day. It was a beautiful day. I think he actually caught some fish, and it was, it was um, they had a great day out in the ocean, and uh, they left early in the morning to go fishing. They're coming back later in the day. The marina was in sight, and there were... Basically, they say, okay, that's it. We're going to wrap it up, and we're going to go home. It's been a long day. But, man, we caught some fish. It's great. And as they, they began to pull into the marina, in the distance, they saw something splashing around. They didn't, they didn't quite know what it was. It was over near some bigger boats. There were some yachts there. So they saw something in the water just splashing around. And as they got closer and closer, they began to, they began to see what it was. It was a little strange. It, it went under, and then it came up for a second. It went under. It came up for a second. And as they got closer, they, they saw that it was a man that had fallen overboard. I think he had a little bit too much to drink, but he'd fallen overboard. And he's, he's there in the water, and he, he's gasping for air and trying to get above water so that, that he can continue to live. He was in distress. He was actually drowning. So they got over there pretty quick with a little boat, and they threw a life ring into the water. And they, and they got the guy who was able to grab onto the life ring, and they pulled him in. They, they pulled on that rope and pulled him in, got him into the boat, And it happened between two very large boats. On those large boats, there's people. They were partying it up, having a good time, smiling and waving at people passing by in their boats. The thing is about the people who are in the boats, if they were just to look a little bit closer, if they would have just paid a little bit of attention, they would have seen that there's people who are lost and dying right in front of them. If they would just looked out there, out of their own world, in their own luxury, in their own comfort, and they, they looked out there, and they, they, they would see that there's somebody who is in need of rescuing, and they, they may have done something about it, but it took these men who were rowing, and they're, they're coming back from a, a long day of fishing to, to see this, this man and, and, and realizing that he needed help. And it makes me think, as we set up this message series for the next three more weeks, I don't ever want this church to have marina mentality. Where we just tie up our boat, we have a good time, and it's all about us. It's about our comfort. It's about what, what, what can the church do for me. But it's about us partnering together and rescuing those who are lost. You know, it's happening all around us. Isn't it true that human nature is to have marina mentality as we smile at our friends as they're, and as they're, as they're sinking to the bottom without Christ? Sometimes it's hard for us to, to look beyond ourselves and the people's lives. We, we see people every day, and, 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 we, and sometimes we, we just maybe ignore, or maybe we just don't pay attention to, to the need that actually exists right in front of us. And we, see, we serve a God who's all about seeking those who are lost. Everybody. People from all walks of life. Their need of rescuing. Everyone, 
Everything we do needs to be about seeking and saving those who are lost. Rescued people rescue people. Found people find people. God's called every single one of us to fish. He's called us, called us to be fishers of men, to, to go out there and seek those who are lost. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching these new disciples to obey the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So what's Jesus saying here? He's saying, go. Go in all that you're doing. Go. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus say, sit. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible does he say, just, just wait for it to happen by itself. The, 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 Jesus says, go. I've given you a command. Now it, it's time for you to obey that command and go. He's basically saying to his followers, fish. Think about a fisherman. He's very optimistic. He's a visionary. He's willing to brave the, the elements of weather. He's willing to, to, to do what might be uncomfortable for the, to, to, to bring in the big catch. And I've told this be, before, but I've seen, I saw some information one time about, about yacht clubs. I'm talking about yachts earlier. But yacht clubs, did you know that Especially in the Northeast, they started out as rescue societies. They're full of people who are risk takers. They're saying, we're, we're going to go do it. We're going we're to go out there. We're going to rescue people. We're going we're to search for those who are, who are, who are, who are in need, and we're going to help them. We're going to get in our boats. We're going to paddle as fast as we can, we're gonna, and we're going to do whatever it takes to save the people who are needing me. They go back to shore, they, they probably, you know, grill up some steaks, and they, 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 they keep a lookout, and they, they keep a lookout to see if anybody was out there that needed rescuing. They, 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 they keep a look on the waters for those, for an opportunity to seek and to save somebody else. And inevitably, you can, you can read about this, that people began to be less and less concerned. They became less and less concerned about the, the, about the people that needed rescuing at sea and became more about their comfort. And they, they said, man, rescuing people, that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work. we got to row out there really, really fast. And, we, and you know, then we got to pull them in and roll, row them back. That's a lot of work. And there's, there's a lot of work to be out there. But, let's, but instead, let's buy some expensive boats. Let's buy some champagne and some caviar. Let's build a clubhouse and, and, and make it more comfortable and so that we, can, that we can just do our own thing. And we'll go on our boats and we'll putter around. We'll tie up and hang out with our friends. So that's what they did. But some people weren't really cool with that. And they're like, no, there, there, there's people out there. There's lives out there. There's, there's people who, who need saving. And we're going to go out there. And we don't have time to, to, to tie up to the dock. There, there's people to be rescued. So they went down to the beach. And they continued rescuing people. I don't want Church 180 to be a place where we, where we tie up to the dock. I don't want Church 180 to be a place that we have marina mentality where it just becomes all about us and, 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 and we forget about those who are, who are in our lives, those that we work with, those that we, that we live next to, those who that, that we see every single day, that, we, that we, we, we don't fail to see the need in people's lives. Because we have a message that this world needs. We have a message that changes people's lives where sins are forgiven and where they can come into a true, meaningful relationship with their creators. Anybody with me today? Found people, find people. Rescued people, rescue people. We're on this mission with Jesus. I want you to think, who in your life, who do you know in your life right now Who might be drowning? Who do you know in your life right now who needs rescuing? I'm going to have the band come forward and we're going to wrap this up today.
Who are those that, you believe, that, we, that, that we believe that God is calling us to reach out to? Who are those that are like the, the sheep that is lost, but we're willing to leave the 99 that are found to go search after them? Who are those who might be like that lost coin where we sweep the house, we turn on all the lights, and we search for that one valuable person? Who is it? We have every eye bow, every head bowed, eye closed today. Father, I ask today that you give us hearts and give us eyes that see people the way that you see them. Lord, stir within us a, a passion for souls. That stir within us, Lord, to, to reach out to those who are, are, are hurting and those who are lost, those who might even seem like the, the outcasts, Lord. May we embrace them with your love. Today, Lord, forgive us where we've become complacent, where we've become just mediocre, where we're maybe we've, we've, we've struggled with, with an apathetic mindset, Lord, but stir within us a passion to do the work that you've called us to do. Father, today, give us words, give us opportunities, give us, give us the divine appointments to, to reach out to the lost, those who are in our family, in our workplace, those who are surrounded by every single day. We worship you. Maybe you're here today. You've never experienced a relationship with God. You've never made a decision to follow him. Maybe you're here today and maybe you're the one that, that you feel like needs rescuing. You feel like you're sinking to the bottom. You feel like, man, it, this, this, this life, man, it, it, it's hard. And if you were to describe your, your life right now, you could put it in these words, I feel far from God. But Jesus came so that you can have closeness with him. He came, he died on the cross. He lived a sinless and perfect life. He died on the cross to pay for your sins so that you can have closeness with him. So that what was once lost can be found. What was once far can be near. And maybe you're here today and you want to make a decision to follow him. I ask you to pray like this. Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying for my sins, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Make me new. And today, Lord, I'm, I'm choosing to follow you all the days of my life. And if you pray like that, he's going to save you. If you pray like that, he's going to change your life forever. Maybe you're here today and you're a believer, you're already following Christ, and you're saying, you know, Pastor Jeff, today I want to get serious about the mission. Today God's speaking to my heart about getting serious, about, about reaching the lost, about reaching those who are in my family, those at my workplace, those in my neighborhood. Today, Pastor Jeff, I am, I, I'm serious about it. I want to make some changes, and I want, to, I, want to, I want to go out, and I want to seek and save the lost. Is God speaking to you about that? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Yes, 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 yes. Father, give us opportunities, give us ways, give us what we need to reach those who are far from you. As a church, Lord, may we just continue to pray and believe to reach more people. Not so that we can have a big church, but Lord, that's so people can experience your true love and your grace. We worship you today. We thank you.